<laughs> should we should we tell them? <laughs> tell them why the audio is so much better. <laughs> yeah. How how long have a <laughs> have a Glenn had a professional microphone on his desk? with an audio interface and uh, <laughs> the sound has been constantly <laughs> taken from the cheap crappy webcam. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's only been about three or four episodes since I got the computer, the new one. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from Number One Projects, Hobar from Behind the Mistakes, and me, KJ, from Crude But Efficient. Just uh, one week to make your central when this episode airs, that is. Woohoo! <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's uh, getting so close, it's scary how fast uh, the calendar is moving at the moment. Or is it just me? No, it is, it is going very quickly. Very much so. I always yeah. thought our origin story should be we um we we all got together we wanted to start a boy, boy band a uh, a take that tribute band but then we couldn't decide who was going to be Gary Barlow so we uh, decided to go for a podcast instead <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a really funny thing to imagine all podcasts actually are just that <laughs> because it scans with most of them i think <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, so guys, what have we been up to? Glenn, what have you do, been doing? Um, well, just before we recorded last week, I uh, I uploaded a video. Yeah, that you did. That you did. Yeah, so I got so I got the lathe video out, which has done pretty well. Hmm? Um, please... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think the prequel to that video was amazing when you made that uh, short about uh, how to unfreeze the chuck. <laughs> and you just, Did you like that? Uh, yeah, and then I saw a video and you just give it a gentle tap and and then you started tapping it and hammering and then you just cut to a different clip. Or yeah. yeah, that didn't work. I, I laughed. <laughs> I laughed all the way into Wednesday. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you got it loose in the end. I mean, you, you, you built a lathe actually from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't kill you instantly. No, still got all my fingers. And it's in one piece as yeah, well. M- most of my eyes work. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. No, it, it works. Yeah. 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 Chuffed a bits with it. Yeah. The um, on the uh, freeing of the chuck video, I got two comments saying, "Oil the chuck, oil the chuck." It's like as if I've not tried that. I just thought <laughs> people would realise that giving it some oil first. <laughs> yeah, but that was a that was a really successful short, actually. So you know. If you're struggling for a few views, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but when we're talking about chucks, I mean, when's the video coming on the angle grinder chuck attachment, KJ? I did a short about it. Yeah, and that, we've had that, that was about it because it was rubbish. <laughs> yeah, but we talked about everything you could chuck yeah. in it. So, um, I mean, I think yeah, it, I, I think it would result in KJ's impending death, though, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I, you can't have the safety squint and stand behind a corner <laughs> with an extension lead. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I haven't found anything that's that felt it, it really needed those RPMs. Um, so no, that's it, it's it's laying on a shelf probably forever you know until I find a use for it. You know when you stick welding. Could you chuck up a stick and then somehow attach it to the electrode and have that spinning? <laughs> it might result in really tidy welds or serious burns, one or the other. So are you are you proposing to put <laughs> and the welder energy through the, uh, what's the call, the, the carbon thing is uh, conducting electricity to the motor and driving uh, that? Yeah. Mm. yeah, you need to disassemble uh, uh, an old drill and take out the, these uh, graphite uh, brushes because you need to yeah, the then attach so. that to the electrode of course to get yes. the current yeah some kind not of not flowing thing. through the motor of the yeah but yeah i think we have a whole concept here really? are you saying that my welds are that bad <laughs> I don't know. The last welds I saw you do were underground, so nobody could see them. (laughs) (laughs) The only 
the comment I got on that was in <laughs> Russian, which Google translates the translate says is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, fair enough, but it will hold. Well, but I think I, I asked uh, the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the perfect solution for you, really. I mean, you love welding, you love angle grinding. And you love digging. I mean, it's yeah. a it's a win win. Yeah, it's spring, so <laughs> dig away. Yeah, it's the electric electrocution part. I don't really like, but otherwise. But you're an electrician. You know how to get over get around that, not get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just put on uh, just some uh, rubber gloves that should a be a condom. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> One for each finger. Yeah. <laughs> Also, also called a glove. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah, but going back to to your late video, um, what did the drill think about its its new life as a lathe motor? Motor. Well, I'm not. I'm not really asked its opinion, but it, it seems to sound okay. And it is not smoking or anything. no, no, no. I think the bearing might be. Uh struggling a little bit but i mean I've, like i say i've had that drill 28 years so it's uh, <laughs> i think the bearings getting ready in the head but that's a little bit noisy but everything else is fine and it's fantastic because it's got so many speed settings on that drill as well so hi oh, yeah, i was just thinking about how, how uh, yeah how uh, how different are they and are is it strong enough to do Strong stuff, so just yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it. It can lathe strong stuff, KJ. Yeah, <laughs> <so good. laughs> that was the worst yeah. English ever. But so, uh, of course, it doesn't matter now, does it? Because if you go to any online marketplace, I mean, they're giving away cheap drills left and right. So, I mean, if you burn it, you can just get 10 new ones within half an yeah. hour, probably. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Or probably a, a lathe for the same price as a drill as well. <laughs> Second hand. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. Well, I, I not, re- not in your country. I mean, you are the you are in the epicenter of lathe country. I mean, they have clubs and everything and swap meets and wife swapping. God knows what they're doing. But... <laughs> I swap well... my wife for a lathe. <laughs> <laughs> I think in, in our case, she would swap me for a lathe. <laughs> It's Michelle that's really keen on the lathe. Um, yeah, no, you're right, actually. There's not so many in Lincolnshire. Uh, Tim keeps sending me loads from um, his way from Yorkshire for about 40 quid. Every time I look online here, they're a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, I just realized that I don't have... I just had a carry-on luggage going to Maker Central, but now with everything I'm bringing back home... I should probably charter a jet. I mean, uh, talking just, about just... Tim, he had this uh, cast iron uh, old timey switch. I really want that one. It's it's really cool. And then, of yeah. course, I want to get the the joiner. And of course, there's a uh, hundred kilos worth of Yorkshire tea. And then there are probably some things <laughs> at Maker Central as well that uh, I probably should pick up. Just buy a van and do a road trip home. Yeah. Hey, seems like you've used the word tea. Have you tried your new teas that I sent you? <laughs> and well, the Bovril. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, uh, we discussed it, uh, KJ and I, while you were out uh, doing a technical errands. Uh, we already have the <laughs> name for this episode, and it's Bovril and Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that gift was brilliant. And when I saw the uh, the Bovril, I, I laughed my ass off. It's brilliant. Uh, and the tea as well. Jam and biscuits. I, I opened them. I've smelled them. And like, yeah. nope. But of course, I'm, I'm going to try them. But I'm going to make a regular cup ju- just in case. Because I, I don't think I'll finish an entire cup of yeah. any of those. Well, the, the jam one. The jam Yorkshire tea was uh, Michelle's favourite up until she was told she couldn't have caffeine and unfortunately they don't do a decaffeinated version of it. But it's supposed to to simulate when you you have your 
jam on toast in the morning with a cup of tea and you get those nice flavours going on. It's supposed to be butt in a drink, basically. And the same with the biscuit version. <laughs> <laughs> Don't that just make you disappointed? <laughs> you get the smell, but not the taste. I know, but you can have jam on toast at 10 o'clock in the morning and without the calories. <laughs> well, I'm... I mean, I don't I'll, like I'll tea. try. I'll, I'll yeah. give them a try. That's. Uh, yeah. I can't promise anything more. Than Did you that. try the Bovril yet? Uh, no, I haven't. But I didn't think you were looking any more manly. <laughs> 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 uh, but I've did, I've done a comparison. I, I haven't used it in anything, but we have the Norwegian equivalent, and it it smells and feels the same. But I haven't used it in uh, any food or as a drink yet. But, but I also thought, talking to Malted Make, and we talked about tools in the medicine trade, I, I saw a totally unrelated documentary about the drug trade, and uh, they had this uh, this tablet pressing machine. So anything you can turn into a powder or paste or whatever, yeah. you just feed it into it. And, a, and it's very mechanical. It's like old cost spinning wheel, and it just stamps out one after one tablets. And I thought... <laughs> Is this my excuse to get one of those, and then I could make like a box of like Bovril candy in pill form, and then I just uh, bring it with me to <laughs> to give to Tim? But um, yeah, I, I might get questioned in customs with uh, yeah, what's definitely. this homemade rickety uh, box of pills that you have here? It smells awfully suspicious. <laughs> it's with just a meaty Bovril, flavor. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to throw the dogs off. <laughs> so uh, what have you been up to then, Havard? Making wise? Uh, a bit of everything. Um, I've completed the table. That's nice. Have you turned uh, it on yet? Yes, I have. And the question is, <clears throat> how hot is a hot table? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is, very hot. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it on for filming purposes tonight. And then, all right, it didn't blow the fuse. And I was sitting by the table and recording the outro for the video. And it's like, all right, it's getting... A, a nice, comforty, <laughs> radiating heat. Oh, nothing too bad. This is perfect. And of course, I just let it on because I don't have a heat camera or anything. So I just have to use touch. And then after half an hour, uh, I was up and getting myself a drink and getting ready for the podcast. And, and I came down again and I just touched it. And it's too hot to touch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, I need a regulator. So it's uh, it's insanely hot. But I unplugged it, and then I just, after two minutes, I laid down on it, and it's like, oh, it's really nice. <laughs> Can you fry an egg on it? Oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I think you could. Actually, I'm, I mean, not sizzling, but of course, it will uh, solidify. And uh, uh, I mean, you could make scrambled eggs on it. <laughs> I've got to do that. But have it's, to do it's that. still a bit porous. I mean, it is concrete, so it's going to be a Baking bitch. paper. Cleaning it afterwards, but yeah. Yeah, baking some, paper. Yeah. Could be. You've yeah. got to do that, Havard. We've got to see that. Or, of course, you could use a pan. That's the traditional way, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody sure. ever just cracked an egg on the hob, did they? <laughs> All right, I'm going to do that first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it on. I'm going to place a pan on it and see how much heat that get transferred there. I mean, if that becomes too hot to touch, then I know it works. Yeah. If not, it will be aluminum foil. Just straight on the table and crack an egg. Yeah. yeah. Just don't don't forget a, a box of crayons or something on it, because then it will be a, a beautiful <laughs> table. Might, yeah, but that <laughs> might look good. You have to smear it out, of course, and then uh, put some sealant on. But yeah, yeah. Well, give it, give it <laughs> How, a nice yeah. wax finish. <laughs> yeah. How Ruby and mono crayon. <laughs> well, to of course, draw I'll, with I'll... crayons on a hot table. That being said, <laughs> I that must um, be interesting. When I finished the video, it was about an hour long, uh, and I have cut it down now, so I'm I'm under forty minutes. Um, but I thought I need to make a short of some sort, and then um, I thought, uh, all right, how hot is a hot table? And then to just fry an egg, that would be a brilliant That'd short. Be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, 
I know what I'm be. I'll be doing this weekend. <laughs> I was just about to say, do you want to end the pod, end the podcast now and go and do it? I'd really want to see this. <laughs> I I would, but there is an egg shortage actually. Oh, uh, so it's. I went to the store again today uh, to see if they got eggs back in, but no, they don't. Of course, the the neighbor has chickens, so I, I could walk over and ask for a few eggs. They have an endless supply, but. <laughs> What kind of regulator are you putting on it? A real floor heating one or just some kind of dimmer switch or? Well, the the, the first uh, I'm going to try, I have a regulator that's big enough, uh, which is also a pulse width modulation. So it doesn't get extremely hot, although you regulate down the power on to the table. And of course, I don't have a switch on it. And I, I actually stumbled over a very industrial looking switch that I can mount on the table leg and it will actually look like it was intentional um, because then I can also have a plug. So when I'm not using it in the summertime, I can just unplug the cable lead and uh, don't have to stumble over that cable. Mm. And I'll, I'll look into if I'll integrate that regulator or, or if I just implement it in the, in the plug at the wall because I'm not going to be adjusting it up and down. I'm going to find the comfortable setting to actually sit and work and just leave it at that. Although it's <laughs> it started as a gimmick and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how much it's going to be used with the heating, but that it works and it actually <laughs> came out a decent <laughs> table. Even uh, the crappy welds and uh, using the bluing agent on the legs and leaving that overnight, as it said, with food oil or any oil on it, it really shown up. So the table legs look really good. Nice. So it's, uh, it actually looks like a proper table. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, it looked really good at, uh, in the picture you sent. So yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah. You get that picture far enough away, anything looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to. I used a zoom lens, so I took the picture from the neighbor's porch. <laughs> but I also, in the middle of this, I got another project. Um, my wife's uncle <laughs> brought over a, a hedge trimmer, a petrol one with the long extension. It, I think it's had three different joints, so it's it's almost three meters long. <laughs> nice. And, he got it from a friend who bought it new several years ago and just left it in the shed. So, of course, mice has eaten off all the squishy bits on the handle. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a bit dusty, but it started up and ran beautifully. And, of course, I have one already, so I don't need this one. So the thing is, what am I going to do with it? And, of course, I've seen this... Uh, pivoting huge V8 engines on the narrow boats in Thailand or whatever <laughs> yeah. with the long shaft and the propeller. So I, I'm thinking, all right, my wife has a stand-up paddleboard. I've tried it and it's, I mean, the paddling bit is cumbersome. So what if I get a propeller and weld on to the end of it? Can I then use that well on those? I think that's going to be a nice video. Uh, with a catastrophical plunge or a, a brilliant motor. And <laughs> I mean, even whatever the outcome is, it's going to be a good video, I think. Please, will you build some sort of cage around the propeller? No, that's uh, <laughs> that's going to limit uh, the flow and speed. So no cage. It's going to be razor sharp <laughs> blades on the end. And <laughs> standing <laughs> barefoot on that wobbly board, <laughs> waving it around. <laughs> I'm just getting these beautiful images of someone doing a stand-up paddle, and it's it's quiet, and you can hear some birds chirping, <laughs> and then just <laughs> <laughs> or comes tossing them on the, on the river. Hopefully, making some waves as well. well that, that's actually my my dream project. Uh, I, I I've discussed this with a friend, um, and it's a bit pricey. Of course, you can you can get a cheap canoe. Um, but I want to implement the engine and the water jet from a jet ski. But I mean, <laughs> a working one of that costs around two and a half, three thousand pounds, roughly. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, it's the labor and getting that into a canoe. But that's that's a relatively small engine, so it it can be concealed. So, of course, 
in the islands in the Oslo Fjord, there are some restaurants and so on in the summertime, which is packed with people. So me and my friend, we could just silently paddle up to that restaurant, uh, have a pint, get back in and then paddle out. And a few meters away from the key, just... <laughs> and just, boom, just take off in the like an instant. <laughs> yeah, that sounds just, pretty brilliant. Just yeah. going to pause for a second and just to compliment you both on your sound effects this evening. Well done, chaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the episode of audio. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about uh, you, KJ? Uh, yeah, since last we, we spoke about uh, things. Uh, I finished my first uh, uh, tufting rug uh, with my nice. logo, and actually, so I actually after five years got up, uh, got my logo up on the wall in the workshop. So that feels feels nice. So <laughs> should I? Fantastic. Should Glenn and I get our hopes up for Maker Central? I mean, we we have logos as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or is the course done? <laughs> uh, no, I have uh, two more. Uh, uh, what do you say? Two more times. Uh, but uh, yesterday was a really, it was a sleepy day for me. So it was, I did not get as much done on that uh, that evening that I, I wanted because we made a lot of errors or, yeah, uh, had some problems with the with the projector and drawing up the thing. I was and then I find oh now it's done. Oh, we forgot to flip the image, so I had oh, to. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, so I had to flip it around and then draw it on the other side as well. And then we have to had to uh, retighten the fabric, and so I, I basically didn't get anything done. So I was hoping to. Uh, to have been made, made made more progress, but it seems like uh, it's going to take take a while. What but, are you tufting now? Uh, it's another. Uh, I'm attempting to do the podcast logo. Oh my gosh! Uh, which <laughs> a, it's a bit more complicated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a it's a bit detaily and uh, a, a few diffuse, uh, vague details as well. Yeah, so it's going to be. <laughs> We talked about it, that uh, me and the teacher, and she said, "Yeah, you could. I mean, use some program to vectorize it and get down the the colors and that sort of thing." But, yeah, I'm gonna do that by hand because you you really <laughs> get a feel for what's a, what you're able to do and what you're not able to do when you're standing there with the gun and try to, to force the yarn in. Yeah, so we'll see how uh, it goes. But, Might be a terrible go terribly, but <laughs> at least I've tried. I'm not sure if it is scalable, but of course, I uh, I think Nerdforge actually told how much they spent on yarn on that the <laughs> four by four meter rug or what is it? But I mean, is it cost efficient to make your own rug? I mean, even a basic, simple uh, one, two color. Uh... I mean, it is if you want something really specific, otherwise. If you not don't care about the uh, design, it's not cost efi- efficient in any way, shape, or form to do anything by yourself when it comes to yarn, At, uh, especially if you have some uh, some uh, preferences about yarn itself, because yarn can cost the sky's the limit on <laughs> the cost <Yeah. laughs> if you're picky with it. So, uh, like anything uh, handmade, it's like that. But otherwise, uh, I've been making slow progress on my next build video. I think I'm like a fifth uh, in on the clips. So it's, I mean, it's really, you you really don't feel that, and I don't at least, feel that excited about editing when you have about 100 video clips to sort out. Yeah. It is a bit much. <laughs> I've but... started cutting down again on mine. <laughs> it's uh, It makes the process so much simpler. And doesn't seem to affect the overall performance of the video either. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, physical, physical labor wise, uh, uh, I've concreted the swing set to the ground uh, in the in the garden, uh, and made a, a quick little uh, short about me welding the 
<laughs> the rebar together uh, because I I poured about like 10, 10, 15 kilos of concrete at the bottom to have to to stand the the legs on, and then poured another. Yeah, I don't I don't know what it became. Uh, yeah, like forty kilos on each leg, it should be. So, so hopefully you, it will stand. So you said rebar. Is this the uh, is this the rose arch which is now anchoring the swing set down? <laughs> <laughs> it felt kind of that, uh, but it was the uh, I, I first went through my scrap pile of old rebar uh, and used up that, uh, and then I took the leftovers from the rose cage. Ah, okay. Uh, so no, that's still <laughs> ongoing. Um, and uh, and while I was. Uh, Doing that, the the neighbors popped, uh, looked over the the hedge and said, "Oh, your new swing set, nice. What are you gonna do with the old one?" Uh, mm-hmm. Well, we're gonna get rid of it. But can we take it? Fantastic. Because they're uh, they're uh, an old couple, but uh, just uh, had their grandkids, uh, so they wanted it. So uh, nice. We don't have to try and yeah. sell it in anything. You just, <laughs> so we just carried it over more or less. Yeah. And then uh, as we did that. Uh, one of them said, I have to ask, what is it you're doing outside the workshop? I will see you filming and doing different <laughs> stuff. Uh, oh, well. And then my wife just, yeah, he has a YouTube channel. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. This is it. Blah, blah. Okay, yeah. So so now the cat is sort of out of the bag in the neighborhood as well. <laughs> Actually, I noticed you've got two more subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the best way, be. KJ. Just tell everybody. <laughs> yeah, but it feels so weird talking to normies <laughs> about what we do <laughs> i just find very quickly that they just don't give a shit <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i'm I'm, uh, I'm not really sure what's the worst they don't care at all or they care really really much i think both of them are kind of <laughs> awkward yeah i uh last saturday we went on a carnival uh at the kindergarten and of course uh, as we talked about in the last episode um, the adults were of course dressed as well I didn't so I just turned up as I usually do and then one of the other fathers is like uh, oh you're dressed up like that guy on YouTube (laughs) 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 there there is a jacket and a shirt I use a lot in the workshop and I I used that that day so all right Touche. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that being said, he's probably the only one in the entire room who had that uh, reference. <laughs> That's yeah, but you, I mean, you, you can get that. I think it was Michael Cthulhu who, who wore his uh, his usual YouTube clothes uh, to a con, and someone stopped him like, are you Michael Cthulhu or are you cosplaying as him? <laughs> Both. Both. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. You're building the brand. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I um, I forgot. I did make something else as well this weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been a busy bee. Yeah. I made a Jenga brick for Maker Central yeah, for the podcast. That you did. Nice. Yeah, it turned out great. It's got a little surprise in there, which Avard is going to explain for the listeners now. <laughs> Am I? Do I want to? Should I? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Glenn has made a Jenga brick uh, with a little surprise in it. Um, is it explosives? And... <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to find out. It has a huge red button. For whatever you do, don't press it. <laughs> Uh, no, we have uh, we have uh, a hidden um, a secret code on it. It's a four-digit code. Uh, we thought about incorporating it into the functionality of the button, but I mean, playing Django with it might uh, give it a bit uh, of a rough and tumble. So uh, yeah, we incorporated uh, uh, a little clue on the outside, and then uh, we thought, all right. Um, after Maker Central, uh, by the end of the Monday, the 20th, is it? Yeah, 
think so, yeah. yeah. If you DM us, uh, we're going to give you a shout out on the podcast. And uh, amongst those, we're going to pick one lucky winner for a surprise gift. And uh, yeah, that should explain it, shouldn't it? I think it should. But <laughs> I'm not sure myself. I mean, what is the, the Jenga thing at Maker Central? This is my first year around, so uh, fill us in, Glenn. What's the concept? I think KJ is probably better on uh, explaining this one. Actually, <laughs> it's his it's his crew. Uh, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I haven't uh, uh, lived it myself. It was wasn't a thing last year, but the year before that, and perhaps earlier than that, uh, it was a thing that uh, makers were uh, asked to to bring their own Jenga blocks. Uh, and then just had a big big Jenga game to play uh, because that's fun uh, when you have different Jenga blocks. I mean, they're different in material, not in size, hopefully. Uh, so then you have to be a little careful if you have one made of wood, one made of metal, and one made of fabric. They, they move quite <laughs> differently. So that's part of the game. Because that was what my thought as well. I, I thought, should I enter? Uh, and then, of course, I now I have the welder, and I need to practice welding. So should I should I weld a Jenga block? And then, of course, since I only have carry on luggage, I mean, it's will I be stopped in customs? I mean, if you have a, a welded contraption of some sort, I mean, uh, am I allowed to bring it on to the airplane? <laughs> if your carry-on luggage is only a metal brick, then they might have some questions. <laughs> yeah. All right. But I'll I'll put it in uh, my daughter's backpack, and if they ask, oh, that's her, uh, that's her binky, that's her favorite brick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her grand her grandfather was a mason, you know, <laughs> so it's a <laughs> it's a heirloom. <laughs> I've seen on Instagram a couple of other guys have made uh, Jenga bricks as well. Dean Makes has made a fantastic one on the uh, laser. That looks awesome, that thing does. I think it's on the laser. It might even be a CNC. But uh, anyway, it looks fantastic. And uh, Oakfield's Creatives also had a go at making one as well. But none of those have a red button. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we start a trend here and have an upswing of big red buttons. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, by the time this airs, they have roughly a week to incorporate a uh, big red button, so uh, it might be a sea of buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Did we give a clue as to what happens when you press the red button? No, that's a surprise. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can't give away everything. I mean, that's true. they need to press the button, but of course... Uh, if they one, want the full one clue might be we have an electrical engineer here and we have been talking about capacitors. So, of course, you <laughs> press the button on your own. Uh, <laughs> at your own risk. Yeah. <laughs> Should we have a liability clause? Oh, we can discuss that after the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fantastic. Um, next week, we'll all be there. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be cool. It's going to be very very exciting yeah i just realized the other week that last time last year i went there were a lot of uh, people walking around with these little robots sitting on their shoulder or in the backpack yeah. and that sort of thing and i thought oh that looks bloody brilliant i'm gonna make one of those yeah i have an entire year to do it <laughs> <laughs> now you have and a week <laughs> yeah I, I got some materials for it did some kind of test and then I've done nothing. So maybe for next year. <laughs> I talking about robots. I this week uh, I realized there there's an old computer game um, beneath the steel sky where the the main character he he has a robot companion but you just have the circuit board and during the game you just found find the shell which is an old vacuum cleaner and you just insert uh, the the circuit board and of course in the entire rest of the game that robot complains over him putting him into a vacuum cleaner it's hilarious but 
I really want that robot because it is like Wally cute, but with an attitude. And I thought with the belt drives and I can easily make that robot today. And of course with the uh, AI and the Arduino, I mean, it's it, it doesn't do anything complex. It just follows you around. So I think if you have uh, some homing beacon device in your pocket or something, he will just follow you along a couple of meters behind and it, you, it could be a drink tray or whatever. But I think that's a, that's a level of robot building I am uh, capable of. <laughs> if I remember correctly, one upgrade for him is having a welder or a plasma cutter perhaps. And he wants to cut or burn everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he have that extension arm that comes out. And uh, of course, it's a brilliant. As long as you have the tracks and everything and, and it moves, then as you progress into robotics, you can always upgrade it. And I mean, yeah. um, I know a maker that has a robotic arm. Um, so uh, let's see <laughs> if you can make a deal with the, <laughs> yeah. with the devil on <laughs> Maker Central. <laughs> Yeah, building a na- nice uh, robot robots platform. Uh, I mean, some kind of tracks or something like that. That would be really handy. You say tracks. That brings me on to Avard. You posted on Instagram. First, your first one was, now I'm a cat guy. You showed a picture of a digger. And yeah. then the other thing was a, like a little tracks platform. I didn't understand what that was. I've not seen anything like that before. Is that the start of your robot? No tracked platform. It was a thing with tracks on, wasn't it? Which wasn't a digger. <laughs> I remember the digger, but I don't remember the. Oh, I thought you posted something else. Or maybe it was. I'm not sure. I've also seen a few years ago, I saw you could get a radio controlled lawnmower on tracks for steep oh, okay. hills and but it's industrial grade, grade so they are extremely expensive but of course they, they sell them on aliexpress so there are some companies now that start to import them so they are coming down in price uh, and of course uh, i'm not going to buy myself a lawnmower but uh, yes yeah, some sort of track platform i mean the possibilities are endless <laughs> so did you get a ticker no, it was. No. Uh, I was getting some spare parts for my trailer, and uh, it was standing there. And of course, I had to go over and uh, <laughs> Straight dream, it. have dream about uh, all the possibilities. Uh, yeah, having a digger would be nice. <laughs> yeah, but then again, I mean, I would see a lot of. I mean, I, I would turn my entire yard upside down because any small things oh i need to bring the digger out and then of course there would <laughs> suddenly be nothing left <laughs> it's a it's a bit like the old saying i mean if uh, if the only tool you have is a hammer then every problem is a nail and uh <laughs> on uh, a private excavator that that's a huge hammer <laughs> so. yeah and then you find yourself you've dug yourself into a hole you can't get out of so then you have to get a bigger digger to get the small <laughs> digger out. <laughs> yeah. But I mean that if I ever get a digger, that's that's one of the goals. I need at some point to big a hole that I can't get out of. I mean, just for the for the metaphor <laughs> itself. <laughs> <laughs> then you have the other one digging your own grave, but that's a bit bleak. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first metaphor that really got. Oh, we've managed to steer clear of this for a while. Yeah, <laughs> come on, guys. Ah, we Let's had, not. We had several cast. episodes now without death being uh, <laughs> the hot topic. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a little detour and uh, take this opportunity to thank James from Malton Make for joining us last week. What a lovely fella! Yeah, yeah definitely brilliant. Yeah, he was really good. Real pleasure to have on. So, thank you, James. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've learned so much as well. It's brilliant. I mean, I, I have a list uh, from after that episode. I haven't thrown it away, but I needed to Google bri- <laughs> bribe West Sussex. Now I know what that is. I mean, plausible <laughs> deniability, that that comes really handy. I'll tell you that. And uh, of course, putting the question marks uh, ahead of the sentence. 
that's new to me and then <laughs> crumble i've heard that before i had no idea what that was and then of course i googled it and yeah i'm i'm not into crumble <laughs> that's a that's an acquired taste. I think you need to be British to uh, enjoy oh, that. No, it's gorgeous. It's a bit like the Norwegian brown cheese. I mean, you need to have it from the beginning. <laughs> no, crumble's nice. It's the, it's the fruit that ruins the crumble. So my ideal crumble would be a crumble crumble. <laughs> <laughs> I would be a more fruit fruit kind of yeah. crumble yeah. without the crumble. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, the crumble doesn't, no, doesn't look or I can't imagine it tasting appealing. That's nice. It's like a yeah. sweet crumbly pastry. I'm a crumble guy. Yeah. More like a biscuit, maybe. How would you describe it, KJ? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a smashed up biscuit, I yeah. would say. Yeah. But it's got to be good. You're allowed to your own opinion and your own taste buds. Yeah. You stick to your brown cheese. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> yeah, that I do not want. <laughs> then again, I, I, I could, of course, uh, bring it over to Maker Central, but uh, there has been rumors about people being stopped, and it, it, it looks like plastic explosives. So people have actually been uh, <laughs> detained <laughs> at the airports, and uh, they had to <laughs> explain Eat what it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a friend of mine he studied in Budapest in. Hungry, and they they are very restrictive on food and what you bring in to um, to the country. And of course, as a Norwegian, he, he smuggled vast quantities of round cheese because, I mean, it was distributed amongst all the Norwegians and Sweden students that lived there at the. So yeah, but it was a risk if you. Uh, I mean, w best case they they took it from you but you could be fined or put to jail if they were in the mood for it they are <laughs> i mean the police there are it's a it's dependent on who you actually stumble across and of course i didn't know that when i went there so uh, i just brought my old backpack and the last time i've used it was new year's eve so it was filled with uh <laughs> rockets and firecrackers in one of the side pockets which i forgot about and i just walked straight through the airport security and everything and <laughs> like <laughs> when i found it i started packing out and i visited it and then like, you brought that to the airport uh yep looks like it <laughs> well if they found you you would probably be in jail for several days <laughs> so, or quite sore in some weird areas <laughs> <laughs> most likely <laughs> I brought a um, half a wheel of cheese back from Holland once in a backpack. And the, the customs, when they felt the weight of the backpack, what's in here? Cheese. I mean, oh, cheesy, cheesy. And the other guy went, cheesy, cheesy, carry on. That's <laughs> the end of that. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's within the European Union. I mean, before you left, of course. So yeah. it, it's easier. I didn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> you were made to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Glen Union. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the Glen Guild. That sounds better. Union is... Uh, yeah, no one's, no one's going to want to join the Glen Union, but they might want to join the Glen Guild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Glen Guild of Excellence. <laughs> I, 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 I can't even say it without laughing. <laughs> yeah. well, and it, and it does help having the last name Knight. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do I you have any wishes? I'm, I'm, I'm bringing Smash, of course, but that's the only thing I've planned. Literally, all I want in the world is Smash. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring you Smash. Yeah, <laughs> and a plop. <laughs> I'll see what I, I can do. Only because I feel like I missed out on the uh, the card that time <laughs> and the dog at it. <laughs> 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 and got massive diarrhea. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't need plop. I had it before, and of course, uh, Sweden is uh, a short drive it's, away. So yeah, it's not the same thing for us. No. <clears throat> Did you try the Cadbury's chocolate, Havard? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing left, yeah. but it's. Uh, <laughs> How does it compare to Norwegian chocolate? It's very similar. This one yeah. is very close to the Norwegian chocolate. Uh, 
So uh, yeah, we just had a nibble, and then of course the kids went to bed, and <laughs> suddenly it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that that arrived just after after the episode when you said you were giving up sugar. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a rough week, uh, and of course uh, quitting sugar, and uh, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a hard thing but uh yeah i hadn't had much uh, soda or pop so it's still a win but yeah but, i mean I, I can't go cold turkey and uh but yeah cutting uh, cutting down a bit on it will help yeah that goes a long <laughs> way i think i mean you're still gonna get plenty sugars just from regular food so yeah that's the problem i mean if you're gonna go completely off sugar then you can't eat rocks <laughs> yeah well you, you can't eat anything processed because it's sugar in everything so then you have to yeah. make everything from scratch and i don't have time for that i got shit to do <laughs> so, <laughs> and places to be so <laughs> you have shits to take <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's that that as well <laughs> I mean, uh, what's up with Havard? it was a bit uh oh he's been uh it's been uh, held up for a week. So. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you both get to Makers? Is it the Friday you both get there? Yeah, I'm getting there on Friday as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Friday evening-ish. Yeah. Depending on if the flights go as planned, because they, <laughs> I was going uh, via Br- uh, Brussels. Uh, but then they decided, when well, yeah, you you go there, and the, but then you go to Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the wrong way. <laughs> I mean, we're we're going early as well, but of course you have to uh, uh, transit through Schiphol Airport. Um, so we're gonna have a couple of hours there, and lunch and so on. So I think it's gonna be the late that's afternoon. Great, that's a great airport to get to. I like that place. The travelators alone. Good fun. Your daughter will love those. Yeah, yeah. And then since she hasn't traveled that much yeah. because she's not very old, so she's going to enjoy every minute of it. So, of course, I'm yeah. just going to tag along and her enjoyment is going to make it bearable for me as well. I hate airports, but she's going to counterbalance that. <laughs> just don't lose her. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's... <laughs> of course, she has a birthday coming up and I'm getting her a gift for the trip. And it's it's a gift that I want myself and has since I was a kid. But um, <laughs> they have been uh, they have been using our baby calls as uh, walkie talkies, and I realized decent walkie talkies now are getting cheap. So, and she wants one, I want one. So I'm getting uh, like a set of walkie talkies that we can have and use at Maker Central because that's gonna be a blast. <laughs> and then of course. Uh, I can use it to, uh, I I can't triangulate and pinpoint her, but uh, I mean, she she can get a hold of me if she gets lost in the crowd. I was thinking actually the other day, I said to my wife, should I um, laser her a badge with a QR code on it? So people can just (laughs) scan it if she goes goes missing. (laughs) Yeah, that's cool. Um, I also thought about making a, I mean, I have uh, these uh, aluminium uh, clamps uh, that uh, you can make like this uh, festival uh, arm braces so I could just write my phone number and just slip it on and clamp it on for the weekend so there's no yeah. chance of getting lost that's probably good but I mean it's not <laughs> going to be that uh, I mean she knows uh, her way around the crowd so I mean it's, uh, <laughs> I can't imagine <laughs> myself losing her but no <laughs> My daughter used to uh, just stand directly behind me, and that was the only time I couldn't find her. Couldn't see <laughs> past my shoulders, and where are you? Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> Shell's going to kill me. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. I'm going to get it the week in advance. We're going to play around with it so that she's really comfortable with using it. And then, of course, my back thought is that all right, I can leave it at the hotel room, and I can say that all right, after you're asleep, I might head down to chat with you guys uh, and of course that is no problem but then if you if you need me then just give me a call and i can just bring it with me fair enough we get um i'm getting there on the saturday morning 
Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That'll be exciting. Then Sheldon, uh, my daughter, will be joining us on the Sunday as well. Yeah. The so they, they're not yeah. spending the night. Yeah, yeah they're, they're spending the night, but they're yeah. having a day in Birmingham because it has the biggest Primark in the country, which Lily is very much looking the biggest forward what? to. Primark. What is that? Primark is a very, very cheap clothing shop. Ah, okay. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go there as well because that's uh, we're going to do go on a shopping spree as a part of her. She loves clothes, and Primark is a is a goal. And we at some point we'll head into Birmingham city center just to spend an hour or two. Yeah. So I think we'll probably start in the morning and then uh, we'll take a break in the middle of the day, depending on. I mean, if he really enjoys uh, hanging around there and a lot of stuff happens, of course, we, we don't have any fixed plans. So, But if she gets bored at some point, then we can take a couple of hours and go into town and do some shopping. Yeah. Is Birmingham still a town? Didn't that go bankrupt? It's a, <laughs> it's a city. I don't know. <laughs> bankrupt. I don't yeah, know. it was something like that. The, was it the culture department or something like that? that... I have no idea. The... the they more or less filed for bankruptcy because it they couldn't pay for some things like the theaters or yeah oh, some oh, cultural things in in Birmingham was they just yeah. just throw out their hands but nope we can't do this. <laughs> I've never been into Birmingham myself. It's um, I've only ever been to the NEC. Yeah, me too. I don't yeah. believe that it is anything other than it. <laughs> I don't even know if Birmingham City is that close to the NEC. To be honest with you. It's not that far, but I mean, that depends yeah. on what you compare yeah. it to. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, if, if you zoomed out a bit in Google Maps, you, you had both on the screen at the same time. So uh, <laughs> it should be manageable. <laughs> With the rest of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it also had Paris and <laughs> Texas and <laughs> Sydney, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You should probably want to nip to Texas then instead. <laughs> Just nip into Texas for a If you have hours. Paris, Texas, and Sydney on the same map, that's that's well well done. Yeah, <laughs> a funny Sydney. funny anecdote there. You actually have a Paris in Texas, so Paris, Texas is actually a ah, thing as well. Okay. Yeah, then it might work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that? Was it Stockholm, Wisconsin, or something like that? Was voted the nicest town in america it was like it had like 86 people living there or something like that <laughs> is that really a town <laughs> it sounds more like a countryside and i think most of them were artists or something like that so it was oh, nice. yeah it was yeah. voted high to be nice <laughs> Felt uh, that bit. being said talking about the geography and the airports i think it's the the largest airport in Austria actually has a counter for specific for people who uh, bought tickets to Austria instead of Australia. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's your expectation, then I can understand you're a bit miffed. <laughs> <laughs> that's some interesting problem solving, I think. <laughs> I think there was a, oh, I don't remember her name. Uh, it's a British comedian who... Well, she she broke up with her boyfriend, and all right, I I need to get away. So she thought about going to Spain, and then she booked the tickets, and then got onto the airplane. And after four hours, it's like she asked the uh, the flight attendant, uh, "I mean, aren't we there yet? I mean, from from London to to that city in Spain, it shouldn't take that long." Spain, you're going to Costa Rica. <laughs> so, <laughs> we haven't even started almost. <laughs> so like, what? I mean, and then it was like a city called... Uh, Costa Blanca. <laughs> yeah, or San uh, something rather. And then, of course, it's the same in Spain. And she didn't care to look at the map or flight times or anything. It's like, oh, cheap tickets, bye. <laughs> but then again, uh, Costa Rica is a brilliant country. So, I mean, she... Of course, you spend more time in the airplane than she planned, but I mean, that's. I would rather go to Costa Rica again than Spain, maybe. So, yeah. As long as it wasn't just for a weekend. So you can touch <laughs> down, have a drink, and then get on the plane <laughs> again. Turn back, yeah. <laughs> Costa Rica 
Costa Rica just screams of kidnapping to me. Well, we didn't see any when we were there, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to that part of the globe, and I try not to believe what Hollywood tells me about geography. Yeah, <laughs> well, it is it is nice, but there is a similarity to Spain because Spain is well. Now Costa Rica is to the United States what Spain is to Europe. I mean, uh, in the seventies, everybody went on holiday to Spain because it's it's a direct flight away and it's cheap and uh, you can buy your holiday homes there and whatever. And of course the Americans are now doing the same in Costa Rica. So uh, a previous colleague of mine actually worked there 20 years ago. And when I explained uh, our journey there, she just like, no, I'm not going back there. It's too changed. So the Americans are traveling down, buying up, all the beach properties and of course the locals can't afford uh, any good housing uh, within uh, the sight distance of the ocean so they are really pissed so again it's nice being a norwegian because you're not an american so they they, <laughs> they still enjoy you <laughs> uh, <laughs> goodbye americans thank you for sticking with us this long yeah You've not, you've not offended anybody in ages. <laughs> no, so it was time to reel it back in and uh, stomp some toes. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. They are. I mean, it's an it's an election coming up, and I mean, it's I mean, someone is going to stomp in the salad uh, at some point. So I mean, I just yeah <laughs> start calling it out just as well. They have to stop finding candidates on retirement homes. <laughs> you have a... a they're, they're not... A, oh, well, don't get me started. But yeah, I mean, you can't you get two better candidates than those two. One that's uh, senile and one that's uh, a convicted felon. <laughs> it's like... I mean, I know a few Americans and they're decent guys and... Basically, every other American I've met have been a better candidate for presidency than those two. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The more the, the more time goes on, and more I learn about USA, the the less I want to go. I feel. I don't know if it's me learning or me be getting more cynical, or is the country just getting worse? I don't know. But I don't see the appeal, especially to to move there and live and work there. That no. seems horrible. We, we have been there a few times, and the, there are areas that I still want to visit, but I will never move there. And I don't understand that people want to move there to work. I can understand it if you are if you are a European citizen, you can go there and work for a period of time, but I would still make sure that I still have my rights as a, a Norwegian in Norway, because if you get sick or anything, it's the first plane back to Norway to get health care. <laughs> <or, laughs> because what they have to pay just to be insured for anything, it's insane. Just to deliver a baby costs a fortune, it seems like, <laughs> in places. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. Disney World's worth a visit, though, KJ, if you get the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You don't, you don't have to go. I mean, you can go, instead of Disney World, you can go to Disneyland. You don't have to leave Europe for that. So. Oh, I don't think it's a patch on the American one, to be fair. Maybe not, but what I've heard yeah. and seen, there, it's packed with Americans. So it's, uh, yeah. I mean, if if I if I enjoy standing in a queue, I can do that elsewhere uh, with other than Americans because, <laughs> I mean, Americans on holiday, <laughs> so, oh man, you can spot them a mile away. They they are loud and obnoxious <laughs> and full of themselves. I mean, so are the rest of us, but we we are. You'll learn to tone it down a bit. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think theme parks are my kind of thing. So going to the biggest, most theme parky theme park there is, uh, I'm not, I might not be the right person for that. Um, 
I beg to differ. There is probably a theme park for you out there. Uh, and I found mine the other day on Instagram. It's uh, it's excavators and lorries and whatever. It's. <laughs> I was really hoping you were going to say Dolly World. <laughs> <laughs> You mean like in Dolly Parton? Yeah, I would yeah. probably love that. Yeah, she's uh, she's fantastic. I mean, she's uh, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably higher on the list than Disney. <laughs> <laughs> but that that being said, uh, I went. We didn't go to Graceland uh, last time we was in America, but we went to the uh, the Elvis Presley Museum in the the city where he was born, and it's. It's run by a local church and it is on the same property and it is it looks like it was built in the 70s and it was dusty brown it was really I mean I I would think that a museum are dedicated to Elvis Presley in his hometown would be much more than it actually was and of course, we have been to a few museums here and there, and it seems to be a trend that, uh, I mean, no matter how big the phenomenon, once you get there, it's like, all right, it, it might have been something in the 50s or 60s, but they haven't changed a bit. And the people working there are probably the ones who started working there in the 50s, 60s. It seems like they've grown <laughs> into the building itself. But yeah, yeah. I, I haven't really been impressed on some of those uh, museum visits so uh... yeah yeah you don't really know if you see oh there's a museum here and the the yeah the elevator can go up and it can go down you don't know what you get it's a dice roll yeah but then again we, we wrap. maybe this is the end of the main episode i mean we should we shouldn't really be kicking someone while while they're down so uh yeah and it's not nice <laughs> Do we have a happy note to end it on? See you at Maker Central. Yeah. <laughs> Maker Central. And be yeah, nice. That's it, that's it. And be nice. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's only nice people at Maker yeah, Central. Very nice. And, don't, and don't, don't forget to check out the Jenga block. Yeah. Oh, yes. And the price is it's priceless. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. Bye.